And there are five different ways you can do so. You can go to newnazarethnbc.org or you can cash app dollar sign official new Nazareth or you can go to Givelify or text the word give to the number 844-942-2595 or contact Sister Deborah Hardaway, one of our church office members, and she will be glad to help you. Also, I want you to know you can download the church app by going to the Apple Store or going to Google Play, and that will help you in all of your giving needs and will keep you aware of what's going on in our church. I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. And remember, God loves a cheerful giver.
God bless you, Nazarites. Hi, my name is Dejanae Taylor, and this is your new Nazareth News Report for February 2021. Happy birthday to all of those who are celebrating a birthday in the month of February. Happy anniversary to all of the married couples who are celebrating their anniversaries in the month of February. You can now start giving towards your 690 Family Church Assessment. Thank you for your faithfulness and for continual support. February 17th begins our Lenten journey. The journey begins on Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, and will conclude on Sunday, April 4th, 2021. The devotional and instructions for Lent will be posted on the church app. We are asking that you will set aside $1 a day during this 40-day journey. Attention, all ministry leaders, do you need to connect with your ministry team? Please set up a Zoom or a conference call to conduct your ministry meetings. Do you need a push? Join us on Monday through Friday at 7.45 p.m. and on Wednesday at 8 a.m. for prayer. The number is 508-924-2976. Join us as we pray until something happens. New membership class can now be completed online in the comfort of your own home. If you would like to enroll, please contact Sister Deborah Hardaway or Sister Ramona Adams. Virtual counseling sessions are now available. If you would like pastoral, premarital, or marital counseling with Pastor Hanson, please contact Sister Ramona Adams to book an appointment. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. for our DSAID hour, also known as Sunday School. Come and grow with us. Remember to tune in every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our morning worship experience on Facebook Live. If you would like to stay connected with us, please remember to download the church app. You can download our app by going to the App Store or Google Play. The question was asked, can anything good come from Nazareth? And we simply say in response, come and see. I am Dejanae Taylor, and this has been your new Nazareth News Report for February 2021. God bless. outside of the city of Chicago? Do you live outside of the state of Illinois and you want to unite with the new Nazareth Church? Well, we have good news for you. E-membership is now available. Just go to our church website at newnazarethnbc.org and click the members tab, click the virtual membership tab, and fill out the membership registration form and join the body of Christ today. Come and be a part of this fellowship. And remember, nobody does it right like the Nazarites. Come and see. talking about how black history came about. Carter G. Woodson, known as the father of black history, developed Black History Month. He recognized that the American education system offered very little information about the accomplishments of African Americans and funded the Association of the Study of African American Life and History. In 1976, during the Civil Rights Movement, President Gerald Ford extended the week into Black History Month. Thank you and have a blessed Week. Hi, my name is Joshua Diaz, and I am reporting about Judge Sam Scott, a slave born September 17th in the state Virginia. He served the state of Missouri for. Emancipation. Emancipation, which he based his temporary residence in a free state and territory state, which he, which slavery was not allowed. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, New Nazareth family. We're here to just lift up the name of Jesus. And we want you, wherever you're at, to just help us sing this song for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We offer praise.
rejoice and be glad in it. It is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Uh, so glad that you have decided to join us. Do me a favor. Uh, do some virtual evangelism. Please share this and tag somebody. Call somebody. Let them know that the New Nazareth uh, virtual worship experience is live and on the air. Uh, we thank you for joining us by way of Facebook and by way of YouTube. Uh, you can uh, go to both of those pages and uh, find our worship experiences uh, there. We're praying for each and every one of you, those who are sick, those who are shut in, uh, those who may be dealing with life's adversity, or you just uh, may need uh, some hope uh, in these times of hurt and frustration. We want you to know that God uh, has not forgotten you, and God is right there. Trust him. Sometimes you may not be able to trace him, but just know that you're able to trust him. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, get into the word for this morning. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me that lead me in the way everlasting. God, our Father, we pray now that you'd give us the words to say, the thoughts to think. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my God, my strength, and my redeemer. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I want to call your attention to the gospel according to St. John. St. John chapter number 2. And... Uh, we uh, read verses 1 through 11, and uh, as I stated last Sunday, that this sermon is a uh, three-part uh, series, and uh, we are on part number two. Uh, and I want to read uh, for you uh, and uh, with you, I want to read uh, verse number six to uh, and verse number seven, verse number six and verse number seven, verse number six and verse number seven of St. John chapter number two, uh, verses uh, six and seven. And it says this, and there were set uh, there six water pots of stone after of the uh, after the uh, manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece and Jesus saith unto them fill the pot water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim verses 6 and 7 will be sufficient uh, for our sermon this morning and we're uh, we're talking about in part 2 uh, the experience of empty, the experience of empty, the experience of empty, the experience of empty, part number uh, two. Last Sunday, we talked about um, the uh, wedding itself. Uh, we know that the wedding... Uh, was there held in Cana of Galilee. And uh, one of the things that we learned about this uh, wedding is that there was an experience of empty where they had ran out of wine. And in uh, this uh, situation of them running out of wine, um, uh, Jesus uh, was petitioned uh, by uh, Mary. Uh, she was uh, eager, uh, she was eager to uh, get to Jesus to make this request known unto him and let him know uh, that uh, he, uh, they had ran out of wine. And so uh, we uh, see uh, that as it pertains to uh, this uh, wedding uh, festivity, as we learned last week, 
is that uh, Jesus, is, uh, Jesus was present uh, at this uh, festivity. So we see the presence of Jesus at the festivity, which suggests to us that he was not there as a miracle worker, nor was he there as a person that was going to defy the laws of naturalism and to display his supernatural power, but he was just there simply to enjoy the festivities of that particular day. They were appreciative of the presence of Jesus and therefore he was invited. And so uh, we understood and we therefore understand that it is necessary for us to appreciate the presence of Jesus, not for what he does for us, but simply because of who he is. And so not only do we see that we uh, ought to appreciate the presence of Christ, but then we also again see the petition of Mary, and uh, what she does is that even in her petition, Jesus reminds her that his sovereign agenda is what is authoritative no matter what our afflictions may be. Jesus reminds Mary and says to, to her uh, that uh, what do I have to do with this? Mine hour has not yet come. And we must be always reminded that Jesus is not our cosmic bellhop. He is not one who is subjected to our desires when we want them and how we want them to happen. We must understand that Jesus is in control and since he's in control, whatever he decides to do is by his mercy and by his grace because what we know is he does not have to do anything but whatever he does, he does it out of his love he does it out of his mercy, and he does it out of his own volition. And then we also see not only Jesus' presence, we not only see uh, Mary's petition, but then we also see Mary's preparation. She did not know what the outcome was going to be. She didn't know how uh, he was going to respond, but whatever it was, she already had made preparations to do whatever it took based off of whatever he says. And so she was expecting him to do something. She was confident about him moving. She was ready for him to move. And many times we miss out on blessings because we are so uh, 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 encumbered by what has not occurred that we have stopped preparing, we have stopped expecting, and we have stopped anticipating Jesus' move in our situations. And so that's what happened at the wedding, and we look at that at the wedding. Now I want to look at the wonder. Uh, that is my second point to the second part of this uh, particular sermon series, and they yield for us three points uh, that uh, I want to highlight. This wonder, what, what, what did Jesus do? Uh, we see in the text that John records that there was set six water pots of stone, and after the manner of the uh, purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece, and Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. When you expect or anticipate God to do some things, even in your empty situations, he will do some wondrous things that goes beyond what we could ask or think. Let's look at the wonder. First thing I want to tell you, point one or two A uh, of this particular uh, point is that Jesus used that which was unsuitable. Yeah, he used that which was unsuitable. Where, where do you see that? Uh, the John says that there were six water pots 
that were there. Six water pots. This word six, according to uh, history, is what we call the imperfect number according to Hebraic history. And this number theologically is the number for man. It is a number of imperfection. It's a number of incompletion. We know that seven is the number for completion. And, and we do know that six is is an incomplete number according to theological history. And so what we discover here, brothers and sisters, is that in the moment of empty, Jesus uses an incomplete number in order to fulfill this empty situation. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that don't judge your moments by the imperfections that you are experiencing. Because what Jesus shows us is that even in a sense where it seems as if it's unsuitable, it's incomplete, it's imperfect, Jesus can still operate even though situations may not be perfect. John records this number for us to study it and develop our own uh, help from it so that we can know that God does not have to th have things align the way that we expect in order for him to work. He can work in some bad situations. He can work in some dark moments. As a matter of fact, that's the best time that you can see him work is when things are not what they should, but he can show you that I can take the incomplete and make a surplus. Oh yeah, he does that. Took five loaves of bread, two fish, fed 5,000 people. Went up to a hill called Calvary, went up, died, and through his blood saved the whole wide world. It's an incomplete situation. It's an imperfect situation. It's a painful situation, but he can still work. Don't you judge the unsuitable moments of your life and think that God is somewhat are trapped and cannot move in your favor. It was unsuitable. Six is the number of imperfection. And some of us can testify that it ain't always been perfect. But he's always proven his perfection. Matter of fact, Paul said that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Sometimes God has to take the bad in order to show us how much God he is. He doesn't have to always allow the sun to be shining in order for you to experience sunlight. He doesn't have to always allow the situation to be uh, somewhat serene in order for you to have success. He can take you right where you are and move by his power. That, that is him working in the unsuitable. But then we see the wonder, point number uh, B to B, that not only does he work in the midst of the unsuitable, but he also uses what is unconventional. He takes, and I'm almost through, he takes these water pots, and these water pots, as the text says, were used for the purifying of the Jews. Uh, these uh, rituals is what uh, they kept and they were highly traditional. They would wash uh, their hands. They would wash themselves. They would wash utensils and, and their feet for guests uh, that would come off. It would use for those traditional ritualistic purposes and those water pots were strictly for that and that only. It was strictly for those rituals and those different cleansings according to the Hebraic culture and law. It was not supposed to be used for anything 
other than the ritual. Are y'all hearing me here? It was not supposed to be used for anything other than the traditional things and purposes that it had been set up for. But what Jesus does is that in order to handle the moment of empty, preach Hanson, he comes in and does the unconventional. Jesus, in essence, uses his power by challenging traditional means and uses it to bring his glory. Uh, they, 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 they said according to tradition, this is what it's for. But Jesus breaks tradition and says, I can use it much more than what you've been using it for. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that if you want him to work on your empty situation and through your empty situation, you got to trust him to use some methods that might challenge your tradition. And many times we cannot get to fullness because we're so caught up with tradition. We're so caught up with our custom. We're so caught up with our rituals that we cannot see the manifestation of the phenomenal be released in our churches. We, we say that's what that's for and we can't do anything else other than what we've been accustomed to. We have limited people. We have limited his presence. We have limited certain things as it relates to worship by our tradition. But Jesus says, let me come in and do the unconventional. You know, sometimes we have gotten caught up with our orders of services that Jesus doesn't even have any priority in our worship anymore. That we got to have the call to worship. We got to do the response of reading. We got to have this. We got to have this. And the reality is, when it all boils down to it, it ain't it in his church? Ain't it his program? Program. Ain't it his service? Ain't it his worship that's geared to give him glory? And listen, sometimes what we have to understand as Jesus shows us that we cannot be limited by the comfort of the custom. We got to move beyond that. Sometimes uh, we got to do some things that may go against protocol, that may go against what we know as the norm. And Jesus shows us that we're not bound by it. And listen, when you've been on empty and you know he's able to do it, you tell him, Lord, whatever you got to do, do it. That's, that's, that's what Mary said. That's what she said in the text. Whatsoever he tell you to do. Do it. You, you can't tell the Lord, Lord, I'm here in your service. Use me. But you have stipulations about what you want to do and how you want to proceed. This is what we see in the text. If you're on empty, you got to let him deal with the unsuitable. You got to let him deal with the unconventional. But then lastly, as I get ready to close, he does the unfathomable. He does the unfathomable. He does that which is immeasurable. They could not fathom this. It was unfathomable. They could not do or see how he was going to do it. But he did it. They could not fathom this. How did he do it? Bible says, fill the water pots up with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Watch it. Six water pots. There were two or three firkins apiece. This is how the, this situation was unfathomable. He uh, does this in a way that these six stone jars, uh, they were really able to hold 20 to 30 gallons apiece. And in total, all together, that's 120 to 180 gallons of wine 
which would produce over a thousand bottles. What he does is he begins to prepare them by using that which was unconventional and unsuitable, un, un, uh, uh, that was unconventional and that was unsuitable rather, to do that which they could not fathom. It was unsuitable, it was unconventional. And now he does that which they could not fathom. What does he do? Here it is, they don't drink wine out of these jars that were used for ritualistic washings. They got wine from bottles. But the wine that Jesus was getting ready to produce, bottles could not hold. He looked 20 to 30 gallons that these things could hold. And all together, it's, the, it's 120 to 180 gallons. And here it is. No bottle could not hold it. It was something beyond what they were able to even think. And what Jesus was doing was getting them ready for the surplus. He was getting them ready for, to receive more than what they expected. Uh, they came drinking in bottles, but they're leaving drinking out of barrels. I want to tell you that what God does for us when we learn uh, how to handle that which is unsuitable, that which is unconventional, he does the unfathomable. He does those things that we do not think he's able to do. He prepares us for the surplus. Don't limit your blessing to bottles. That's what, he's, that's what the text is saying. Let him give you barrel blessings. Let him give you those things that go beyond your thought process. Don't limit yourself to just one thing. Let God expand your territory. Here it is. They wanted wine. They needed wine. They were on empty. But here Jesus gave, gave Mary more than what she asked. More than what they probably had even came with in the first place and had supplied at the wedding. I want to tell you, get ready for God to do the great. I know you You just pray, Lord, bless me and just do this. But you ought to ask some Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, whatever you see fit and however you see fit to bless me, Lord, I'll be receptive. No longer am I going to limit myself. And I'm through. No longer am I going to keep myself in the margin. No longer am I going to keep myself in the narrow constrictions of the minute. I want God to do the major. I'm going to prepare myself for him to do the major. I know I came to him with one request, but I'm going to have him do more than what I asked him to do. And I want to tell you uh, that sometimes God may do those things that seem like it makes no sense, seems like it doesn't uh, add up, but sometimes God has to take unsuitable and unconventional ways to get you prepared for those things that are greater than you can imagine. You wonder why he did this, and you wonder why he did this and did it this way. Now, it, it didn't make sense then, but it, might, it makes good sense now because now you understand that if he would not have done the unconventional and went beyond our tradition, you wouldn't have the surplus of success that you have now. God, we thank you. We thank you that you know how to handle our moments of empty. We thank you 
that you don't just stick to what we know as the norm. Now somebody here, God, may be wondering whether or not you can handle their empty situation. Let them know that sometimes you are doing some things out of the norm to do some things that will bring great results. God, we dare not get discouraged. We dare not get so upset by the process because we know that the process, even though it may not be what we want or how we think it should go, it's still taking us to where we need to be. We thank you now, and we love you now. Thank you for being a God that can work with us while we're on empty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a word. What a word. What a word. I pray something was said to help you, to encourage you, and to edify your spirits as we deal with trying and difficult times such as these. Listen, if by chance you desire to fellowship with us and you want to know, uh, are the doors of the church still open? I want you to know that even though our physical gatherings may be limited at the moment, I do want you to know that the doors of the church are always open. Whether you're coming by letter, Christian experience, or even a candidate for baptism, please let us know and we can receive you into the fellowship. You can either call us at area code 773-731-4747, or you can reach out to us either by way of Facebook, and or Instagram, message us at the official New Nazareth Missionary Baptist Church on Facebook, or you can reach us on Instagram at the New Nazareth Missionary Baptist Church. Or you can email me at Rev, that's R-E-V-D-R-J-J, Hanson, H-A-N-S-O-N, at newnazarethmbc.org. We will receive you right where you are. Also, if you like to be a blessing to us, just know that there are five ways that you can sow seed into our ministry. Thank you for every gift that you've given. Thank you for participating in this virtual worship experience. I want you to know that I love you, God loves you, and there ain't nothing that you can do about it. Have a blessed week, and I pray that God's blessings will be upon you and that his face will continuously shine upon you. Be blessed. See you next week.